Warzone is finally out, and today I have the best settings for maximum FPS, insane aim, and the best sound. Enough yapping, let's get right into it. Display mode, make sure it's on full screen exclusive. Right now, we're just checking, making sure everything's on the right. Display monitor, obviously your monitor. Display adapter, obviously your graphics card. Screen refresh rate is very important. Make sure it's on the right hertz. I have a 240 hertz, so it's on 239. Obviously, make sure it's on the right resolution. I have a 1440p monitor. Aspect ratio automatic, display gamma 2.2. Brightness is a big thing. So on by default, it's on 50. I like to have the brightness a little bit higher because there are some areas on the map that can be a little bit dark. Then you want to go down to NVIDIA reflex no latency. I like this on on boost or some people like it on on. Don't have this off. You definitely want to use this. Next, VSync gameplay. Make sure the VSync is off. This will hurt your frames. The VSync menu off. Custom frame rate. I like to have this on unlimited. Focus mode 90 and make sure your high dynamic range HDR is off. Next, quality. Render resolution obviously on 100. Dynamic resolution off. Fidelity cast. Now when you put it on fidelity cast, you can do show more and you can increase the strength of this. I like to have it between 90 to 100. This is going to make your game look a lot more sharper and clear. It's a game changer. Yes, it does hurt your frames a little bit, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Uh, VRAM scale, I have this on 80, I have this on on. I have this on off, and this is for the 40 series. And the reason I have this off is because it was causing lag in my game and giving me random packer bursts. So if you're dealing with that and you're having that issue right now, you definitely want to try this off. Texture resolution normal, texture filter low, depth of field off, high, high. Bullet impacts on or off. I have it on for fun, but you technically want it off. Off low off normal for the shadow lighting uh, uh, low off 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 low this is going to help you a lot with frames trust me you want a lot of these settings off here environment off max low off 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 next fov i prefer 120 in war zone because the higher the fov usually the better you can see more of the map and it gives you less visual recoil as well. So for that reason, I play it on affected, which is going to help you have less visual recoil. Weapon field of view, I personally like wide. It makes the gun look smaller, which I think I can see sometimes more of my screen. And it looks a little bit cooler. Uh, vehicle field of view, just have it on default. Now it's another thing that's going to help you kind of lower that visual recoil. World motion blur, you definitely want this off. Weapon motion blur off. Film grain all the way to zero. You don't want that film grain on. And this is another thing people don't notice. First person camera movement, drop this to 50%. This is going to reduce the shaking, you know, when you're getting shot at, explosions, all that. You want to reduce this all the way. And you can put this at 50% as well. Now, I do play on controller, but some of these settings are going to apply to mouse and key as well. So let's get right into it. So I play on controller. I play on flip. So I have this on. Vibration, you can turn it off. If you want to turn it off. I also play on tactical. So I have tactical flip on here. Now, if you go down to dead zone inputs, I play on lower dead zones. Now, you can kind of see the graph here. You can mess around with it, you know, especially when you do a left stick max, you can see it go up and down. And this is really nice, especially for your left stick. So if you want to improve your movement and you want your movement to be more fluid, you want to have your dead zones lower. It doesn't really matter if you have stick drift on your left stick. It doesn't really move. So my left stick minimum is at one all the way, pretty much almost a zero. And then my left stick maximum is at 80. So basically when I move my stick, it's going to it's going to activate and re and react a lot quicker than if I had this at, for example, let's say 99, because I, I have to go more into the center before it starts hitting and reactivating. Uh, so I like to put this lower to 80. My right stick minimum, it's usually by default, it's like five or 10. Uh, lowest, you kind of you five is a good place to be. If you can drop it a little bit, you know, three, four, two, you can definitely mess around with it. I feel like if you can get used to it, it makes your aim a little bit better. You have more control of your stick. Now, people say, oh, but I get stick drift. When you're actually playing the game and you're moving your stick around and you're, you're in control of your stick, the stick drift doesn't matter. It's just when you're standing still and doing absolutely nothing. But if you're controlling your guy, if you're moving, you're aiming at something, you're always going to be uncontrolled. So you don't really have to worry about stick drift. So in the long run, it's kind of better. You'd never want to mess around with right stick max. This will mess up your aim. So I have this on 99. Left trigger, right trigger, zero. Now for the aiming aspect. I tend to play on 661. This is what a lot of the pros play. Warzone, it does benefit a little bit on the higher senses sometimes. So you see people play on 7, 8, 9. Um, usually the highest I'd recommend is like 8, 8. But if you do go higher, then you definitely want to lower your ADS sensitivity multiplier. So for example, if I do 8 and I do 0 0.75, it's basically ADSing on 6. So it's going to help me shoot straighter when I'm ADSing. 
you don't have to go all the way down. If you think you can handle 0.8, then you can do 0.8. But I would really recommend between 6 to 8 sensitivity for really good centering and consistent aim. So that's a big thing. Obviously, aim response curve type. Dynamic has been the answer for years, and it's still the answer. Definitely use dynamic. This is going to give you that snap ability, that snapping around, aiming really good. What all the pros use, it's definitely what you want to be using. And there's a new setting here. You can do show more and give lower or increase or leave it the default. Your aim response curve slope scale. So this will basically weaken it or make it stronger. I've definitely messed around with it and I've lowered it and it feels good sometimes, like even better, but then it feels inconsistent in a way. So I just leave it a one, but hey, the settings there if you want to mess around with it. And this is on one instant off target aim assist on, of course, aim assist type black ops. This is another interesting setting. So even on MW3, it feels like you get less aim assist. It feels like they weaken it just a little bit. And with black ops, it makes it feel like the aim assist puller, it pulls a little bit stronger. So. I like Black Ops. It doesn't feel anything insane. Default still feels really nice. I'm going to keep messing around with Black Ops and Default, but those are the only two you should be using. If you feel like you've been using Default and you're getting less aim assist, then try out Black Ops and see how it feels. And now into the gameplay aspect of Warzone, which is going to be one of the most important settings. So pay attention. Automatic tactical sprint is going to be a must. This is going to improve your movement a lot, and it's going to make it easier on you, on your controller, on your hands. This setting is amazing especially for warzone where you're running around a lot another setting people have tested around and i've used it before is single tap run where instead of having to click your button twice a sprint you just click it once and gives you that that tactical sprint which is nice and allows you still to walk around if you want to bot you know bot walk is what we call it so that's also another nice setting but i prefer automatic tactical sprint after using both of them grounded mantle off make sure automatic airborne mantle is on partial automatic ground mantle slash hang off slide dive behavior now this is an interesting topic because slide only makes your slide cancel technically a little bit better and on mw3 that's all i was using because you really didn't need to dive but what i will say is in warzone diving i think will come in handy and you will see it being used a lot more warzone 2 all people did was dive because sliding wasn't as effective but now with slide canceling back and sliding being really good I think tap the slide is going to be the wave where you're still going to utilize a dive. You're going to click and your stick to dive, but you're not going to do it as much. So tap the slide is probably going to be the answer here. Plunging underwater, do free. Parachute auto deploy. Make sure this is off. This is, means you have complete control of your parachute. So if you're falling down fast, you want to get really low or wh whenever you want to open your chute, you have that opportunity versus the game just doing it for you. Sprinting door bass, of course, you want to sprint through doors. Make sure that's on movement based ledge climb behavior that's going to mean you can just move your stick around or forward to like climb over a ledge or something you don't have to actually jump slide cancel sprint this is another interesting one so people have this have a couple people have this on and you basically can slide cancel with your stick in your in your sprint but what i will say is this this is a very weird way this can mess with your slide cancel especially if you're slide canceling like the og way like just slide jump aim in so if you are doing it that way, which I'm sure majority of you are, make sure to have this setting off. Common behaviors, hold, sprint tactical focus, hold, this is some default weapon mount activation. I do ADS plus melee. So this is for me to mount. Mounting is going to be obviously very important in Warzone. Uh, these are some pretty basic settings, but this is a very important one. Interact slash reload behavior. I like prioritize interact over all of them this is going to allow you to basically grab loot grab everything just simply by clicking you know square for me but very quickly you'll grab everything this is what all the you know people have been using warzone for a long time armor plate behavior apply all is another big one this means when you played up it starts plating you up completely and then you can cancel if you want to at any time but when you do apply one it's like you apply one and it's like oh i gotta click it again and like it, it like it, it, there's a delay sometimes you definitely want to use apply all I did, and the most of these settings here should be pretty default. I don't think there's anything else really in these. Now for the audio settings, I prefer home theater. And yes, I feel like this one is the best for me. I also have sound EQ on on my actual PC. So that's something you definitely want to have on if you don't have it on. Uh, these are just my, you know, what I'm using the hi-fi cable input. These are my master volume, my volumes really quickly. I have it on 90 music volume on zero because it doesn't give you any any advantage to have music volume dialogue at 60 so i can hear you know it's not too loud but i can still hear my guy say, or a girl saying something right uav inbound whatever it is affects volume 100 affects volume is probably the most important volume 
voice chat volume i have it on 24 so if i you know game chat or hear people talking cinematic music volume zero of course voice chat on all lobby so you can talk to chat or you can talk to people in game uh on on these are just settings so you can talk in game so we went over some important important settings but we're not done yet we got to talk about the interface and there's some important things here that will help you in the long run so first of all these things are pretty default here but color customization so this is something i use and you know you can too so you can use custom you can change your colors like if your enemy team whatever but that's not all i use so what i actually do is to make the game look more colorful brighter it's better in general i use color filter too i put it on both so it's everywhere it's on, in the game and an interface and then i put it both on 100 so this makes it, the game more colorful more vibrant pops pops more which is really nice so that's one thing the next thing is your hud bounds so this is going to help if you if you bring this in a little bit more compared to like just completely out so if you pull this in a little bit more it's really nice because what it does is it brings everything on your interface inside so we're talking about mini map we're talking about ammo we're talking about you know looking at your tacticals and mini map is if not probably the most important thing on the, your screen so having that mini map a little bit closer to the center of your screen it allows you to focus on the game but also look very quickly on the mini map instead of having to look all the way in the top left instead you just you can do a quick little glance a little bit lower and see it so this is a very important thing to to understand so you definitely want to lower that also make sure your mini map shape is on square not on round this is going to give you a bigger mini map which again <laughs> it's a pretty big w make sure this is on 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 crosshairs static uh this is like kind of the wave over you know just having it on or off static definitely helps be a little bit better uh next one is center dot i definitely have this on it gives you a little dot in the center of your crosshairs and in your screen which one helps with centering two helps with just like centering again and lining up your aim you know especially when a target is coming near you so i have this on on and i put my my dot on default so there's three my camera's blocking it but you see when you go to the settings there's three uh larger is like it's getting a little big and largest looks a little too big default's fine to me but if you want you can put it on larger and lastly if you go to the telemetry and you want some of these things in the top left being shown aka your your fps your latency packet loss you want to see the temperature of your gpu you can turn these on over here and it's going to show anything you would like to see Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a lot of big tip videos planned, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You're not going to want to miss them.